You know, if this goes well, I would honestly be surprised. So in case you hadn't picked up on this yet, we're building a new computer. However, we're going to be doing something a little more custom today. Now, what I mean by that is there's actually a problem with these boards. Um, the 12th gen, 13th gen, uh, anything with the 1700 socket actually has a bit of an issue where it has trouble applying pressure evenly and ends up with stuff like cooling temperatures being higher than they should be and just warping other stuff. It's not a great uh, socket, so we're going to be removing that and using a Thermalrite case, which I have here, and we're going to be installing the CPU with that, if you can see that. Essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the CPU in first so we don't accidentally bend any pins and then we're going to be removing the 1700 socket and placing this in. Now the reason I actually chose Thermal Right here instead of Thermal Grizzly or one of the other competitors is because it actually has a piece of plastic that runs along the bottom here that will make contact with the motherboard. So even though I don't have a torque screwdriver um, I should still be able to apply the right amount of pressure here. So we're just going to have to see how that goes and hope for the best. The CPU I've picked out, uh, it's going to help me a lot with my editing. It's the Intel i7-13700KF. And basically what that means is we're going to need an external graphics card, which I pulled out of my old computer just fine. So I'm going to be very careful here to not bend any pins. We're going to be placing the CPU in first. Now my old PC had an 8th gen i7, which basically meant it had 6 cores, whereas this one has 16. Needless to say, it's going to be a pretty big improvement over what I had. Now with that in place, we're going to be removing these pieces here. Now we've got to be extra careful with this here. Okay, now when we're, we're going to be tightening this here, we're going to be very careful about it. Now I'm just going to turn it to the left until I hear it click, and then I'm going to turn it to the right just a tad bit. There it is. Alright, we'll go 80, 180 degrees on the first one. Do cross sections until it's all the way down. It's a little bit of resistance there. There's the resistance on that one. There it is. Now we've met with resistance, we're just going to snug them up just a tad bit and then we're good. What we don't want to do is over tighten any of these. And I'm not going to try and force any of them. To be honest with you guys, that was the part I was most nervous about. I've never done that before. With this, I should be seeing lower temperatures because the contact with the cooler should be better. Uh, wasn't all that expensive, so you know, as long as it didn't break anything, yeah. I'd say that's pretty worth the money. Now, if you want to learn more about this and the pressure and the 1700 socket, I would recommend there's a video by Gamers Nexus that goes over all of this and I would highly recommend checking that out if you're interested. Alright, now that that's done, I'm actually going to move this out of the way for now because I don't have enough screws to screw this into my new case. So we're going to be pillaging some from my old computer. I'm just going to really quickly explain, uh, there's some tape that runs along here. I may or may not have used this thing as a footstool. Mm, I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, how many screws do you really need to hold in a power supply, right? I never even use these. I'm contaminating my workstation by opening this. Alright, so I've gotten the screws I need, and now I'm thinking the next step we should do is test out the power supply. Now, the power supplies tend to be a draw-in system, so they shouldn't supply more power to a component than what it needs. 
So even though this is a 1000 watt power supply, this 450 watt power supply, it shouldn't matter if I plug them in. There's this thing called coil wine where apparently the board, either the motherboard or the power supply, can sometimes make a loud whining noise. And I've never had that before, and I'm really not interested in starting now. So I took that into consideration here, and I got one that I think should do what I needed to do at a noise level that won't bother me. Okay, they included zip ties. That's great because I forgot to get some. So that's very cool of them right from the get-go. I didn't know power supplies had a smell to them, but apparently they do. Nothing's exploded yet. Oh. Yeah, that, there he goes. It's spinning. All right, it spun for a second. That means it works. We're not going to mess with it anymore. We're going to place it in the new one. Ow. Ow. I should have gotten some band-aids out. I don't want to bleed over all my new components. I'll be right back. All right, I managed to find one, so, you know, that's good. My backup plan was to bust out the super glue. So my next step is to identify whether I need to put this on the motherboard before I put it in the case, or if I can do it after. Uh, did they include a set of instructions? No, no they did not. I've got a medium sized case, which I'm hoping this will fit in. Now the orientation that this takes is also extremely important. AIOs? They all have some amount of air in them, and that's going to collect in some part of the system, and you want that to collect. Usually, right here is the best area for that. So you want this to be the highest point in your build, so the air collects there. In other places, you could end up with performance loss. You could end up with a reduced lifespan on your cooling unit. You may have to RMA it. Yesterday, I thought that I had gotten the wrong backplate for my cooler. As it turns out, um, what I got is actually the revised version of the original socket that came with these. And you can see it's got four holes in the center there. And therefore, it will fit my 1700 socket. And I won't have to worry about any of that. Uh, took me way longer than I should have to figure that out. All right, so essentially what we're going to start with is we're going to get this underneath it. We're going to put four washers on it. And then I think here, I'm assuming these are the ones I have to use. They're a bit longer. I got eight of them. These four are a bit longer, and we're going to try using those. I've stuck my camera to my mic stand so that you guys can see here. There's the screws kind of see we just place that in the far out end of this and I checked to make sure there's a little bit of an indent a little bend on the on the back plate here and we're actually going to be placing that not cupping the back of the 1700 um, socket but instead it's going to be pushing out against it uh, I had that backwards at first. Always read the manual for these things if they have one. And then we should be able to just place the motherboard over it. Hopefully these are the right sockets. Now the next thing we gotta do is actually uh, prep this thing, which requires me to take these and place them on either side of this here. All right, it looks right. Let me just make sure it's making contact with the plate. All right, now that that's properly seated, what we're gonna be working on is getting the case, which I have over there, and we're going to mount the motherboard into the case, and once that's done, I think we can go ahead and look at the cooling system and try and figure out how we're going to mount that. Because, to be honest, it's a lot thicker than I thought it would be, and I'm going to have to figure out where to fit it. Um, so we'll just have to see how that goes. But first things first, we're going to get this in the new case and go from there.
All right, so what I have here is a Genesis case, and I got this for free, actually. Someone was going to throw it out, and I just decided, hey, you know what? Mine now. I actually got a lot of parts secondhand. There's a few that I didn't get secondhand, such as the CPU and the power supply. Mainly with the power supply, you never want to buy a used one because it'll avoid the warranty. Usually power supplies will come with a pretty long warranty. The one that I've got has a 10 year warranty on it. It's usually best to just pick one up new, spend a few extra bucks and save yourself a lot of hassle later down the line. And essentially what we've got here is the little sockets that'll hold the the motherboard in place. There's nine of them in there, which I've already checked, and that's exactly how many holes there are in our motherboard. Now, if you do get a case and a motherboard, I would recommend that you make sure that there's only the exact number of these as you have holes in the places where you have holes, because if these touch the back of the board, there's a chance that they could short something out and cause damage to your motherboard or computer. So that's always something you want to check usually, and, um, we should be good to go from there. All right, so here's the deal. Um, I had the wrong screws. And apparently the standoffs on the case are pretty specialized. So I had to go get some new ones. I ordered some off of Amazon, but they're not arriving uh, for quite a while. They got delayed. So I went and I got some different ones in town when a store opened up. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. We're just going to continue on here. We're going to get the motherboard put in there. And we're going to finally, hopefully, finish up this project today because I, I think it's drug on a little longer than I thought it would, and I think I'm ready to have a computer again. So let's just get going, because I'm, I'm ready to get this done. Okay, now I just gotta screw it all back in properly. Maybe I'll just put that in right after this. Oh, shoot. No, I actually needed that one. Um, I've got a two terabyte drive here. It's basically so I'm not having less storage than my old one has. All right, there we go. Let's get the power supply in. So essentially this one, it's just gonna go this way. Cause fan here, fan down, air filter, well not, well, sort of a filter right here on the bottom side. There we go. And I think the next thing we've got, probably the cooler, right? So yeah, I'm thinking we're probably gonna have to mount the cooler in the front. Hmm, so it's just a little bit too big. It wouldn't be though, if it wasn't for this plate here. So I wonder if I can't just remove that. I'm going to come around and remove all of uh, this here, this area, up to this maybe. Just any of this and then kind of come back a ways so that the, the tubes have some clearance. And I'm just going to remove pretty much this, all of this, because it's all really annoying. Other than that, I should be able to fit the thing in there. All right, I'll be back when I finish that up. All right, so. Hey, 
I genuinely don't know how many days this has taken at this point. It's kind of all blended together. Right, my cooler wouldn't fit. <laughs> the radiator, to be specific, because apparently, you know, I measured it, but there's these cords that run along the top here for the buttons, and I didn't account for that. So what I did instead was uh, <laughs> I cut an absolutely massive hole in this section here so that I should be able to run the thing down that way. All right, that feels snug, I guess. So let's take this back off, uh, get the plastic off the bottom and then do the Arctic paste they included. And if that isn't good enough, then I'll swap out for something else. There. Apparently a lot of people forget that part. It's kind of got a gross blue look to it, but whatever. Function over form, I suppose. To be honest, it's a bit of a sloppy job. I usually spread it around with my finger, so, you know, I am decided to do it the quote-unquote proper way this time and not do that. I guess now that the cooler's in, let's go ahead and put the RAM in. We've got some DDR5 here. This is a 690 motherboard, so I probably will have to uh, do a Q flash on it uh, to get the newer BIOS so that it'll run a 13th gen processor. Okay, so I, I don't actually have the motherboard instructions manual because I got it secondhand off of Amazon, and it was packaged up in like an Amazon warehouse box. So, yeah, um, <laughs> no manual. I'm just going to assume how to put it in, and then I'll look up the manual online for it later, and I can double check. I'm going to assume that. Ow! Damn it! I, I always seem to do that somehow. It's not pleasant. There we go. I'm going to assume that is the proper orientation. One on the far side, away from the CPU, and then one on the second slot, away from the CPU. If you leave an open slot on the last one, it'll sometimes bounce signals off of the empty port. Uh, I've heard of that being an issue. I don't know if that's a thing that happens, but I figure, hey, you know, even if it's not a super major thing, it's not like I'll be dropping that much performance from it. This is my 1080 graphics card that I have had for a very long time since I had that other computer. I believe these came out in like 2016 and I've had my computer since like 2019. You know, this thing has held up extremely well. It plays pretty much everything I need it to play. I mean, I might have to turn a few graphics settings down now and then, but like, as far as shadows go, I'm not all that concerned about it. Like, I don't need ray tracing. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's gotten me this far. Uh, it was out of my budget to buy a new one. I'll just focus on the CPU and then skip out on the graphics card this time. I did get a thousand watt power supply, so if I do feel like upgrading from this later on, I can do that without issue. This thing will hopefully last me maybe another couple of years. I might be planning to run it into the ground. I don't really know. We'll just have to see how it works out. Let's see if it... Oh man, I really hope this fits. Okay, yeah, it just barely fits. I have enough room for my fingers between that and the fans there. Oh man, I didn't. I did not consider that. So pretty much the only thing I have left now is wiring, and the thing about wiring is it's slow, tedious, and really, really annoying to deal with. So I'm probably just going to do that with the camera off. I'll talk to you guys soon. I finished up pretty much everything. I think. 
Uh, the main thing is I finished the wiring. Everything should be hooked up. Ignore that. A small flash drive right in there that I prepared. Again, ignore that. It's having problems. That is, we're... <sighs> Okay, so yeah, this uh, flash drive, it's having issues. No, no, that's having issues. This flash drive is, I'm sorry, it's 2 a.m. <laughs> flash drive, BIOS, we're going to Q flash the motherboard, get the new BIOS in there, and then it should be able to support the 13th gen processor I have in there. That's the gist of it. And I got to get all my files transferred over too, so the only thing left to plug this in this last cord oh there we go we got lights on um so i should just be able to press the q flash button now all right now it's flashing like it's supposed to cpu temp is 37 degrees celsius that's not bad not bad at all 29 degrees celsius even better all right Seems like everything's looking good. All right, we're installing Windows now. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, I've got a lot more setup to do on this. I gotta get some drivers installed and fix all the broken devices that are in the device manager. So I got a lot of stuff to do. Um, <laughs> I suppose I'll work on installing stuff as soon as I get it stable and then I guess I'll probably go back to making gaming videos for a while, right? That seems like the obvious thing to do. Sometime tomorrow, I'll fire it back up, give you guys one last look at the entire thing when it's completed. Glass panels, zip ties cut and whatnot. Then that'll probably be the end of the video. We finally made it. I think it's been a few days shy of a week now, but it's finally actually done. Now, just this morning, I finished up the wiring at about 4 a.m., and then went to sleep for a few hours and when I woke up started working on getting stuff downloaded and moved over from my old machine so I've got most of that all done now I've only got a few larger software downloads to do I reckon since we're here at the end uh, having built computers before just never one for myself so never one as custom as this I went into it knowing that things would probably go wrong in some regards so i took a lot of time uh several days actually to go through each and every part that i ended up ordering and trying to figure out pretty much anything i can about uh just what to watch out for and just general stuff like that and uh, comparing different brands and products in maybe three or four days at least um just doing that so my budget for this was about a thousand dollars. I tried to stay under that as much as I could, but I did go slightly over um, taxes and whatnot. Ended up leaving it at around a thousand eighty dollars. So not too far off. Um, the only thing I really skipped out on was the GPU because, well, I haven't had much trouble with the one I've had so far, and uh, the CPU will take me a lot farther in terms of editing and whatnot, which I sorely need so the first major point of failure i'd say would be the cooler um i had an issue early on where the back plate wasn't really sure if it was the right kind that i needed and it ended up being the correct kind but the reason i thought that was because it was an upgraded version of the original that they sent so it didn't match the original and it didn't match the upgrade module that they also sold separately and so i didn't know if i needed the new one or not I had like a slight delay due to that, but that's not a big deal. The The second thing I had issues with was the motherboard, right? I didn't have the proper screws for it. Uh, it had a different thread than the one I had on my old one. And I had to order some off of Amazon and then it got delayed. So I ended up uh, actually going to the store and buying some when it got delayed. And then the third point would be modifying the case to fit the cooler. We had to cut out that one segment there uh, for the cooler to fit, and it fits fine now. Yeah, so since you probably can't see it well because of the lighting, I'm just going to put up some images I took with my phone, 
and uh, you can kind of see the inside of this thing, and it looks pretty nice, I think. Came out pretty well. So, um, I think that's a success. We will be back with normal videos uh, here in the future. I've just got a few more downloads and stuff to get done, and then I'll probably be back to editing normal videos here um, shortly. And that is to say, I do gameplay videos. My name is Rain. Uh, I don't know if I did an intro where I said that at all. So if you made it to the end, hi. <laughs> uh, all right, I guess we'll call it there. And so this was just a nice little thing to mix stuff up a bit. Thanks for watching. Cheers.